Hello, hello, and welcome to the Coder Kids podcast, episode number 24. This is Jeff Ward to my left. Hello. And I'm James Thornock, and yeah, so welcome. This is our end of year, start of the new year podcast. We can't tell by my personal background. Um, I just saw that, James. I was on another screen, and I just saw that. I really like it a lot. <laughs> Surprise. It's too late to change it now. All right. <laughs> So let's do a quick personal update, and then I can't think the theme for this podcast is um, kind of highlighting and reviewing what we've done really quickly, and then also talking about some kind of continuation with some of the stories, some interesting developments, and a little bit teasing and talking about our goals for the future and what we've got planned. So yeah, on to on to you, Jeff. How was James? Well, New I Year's feel Eve? like the last episode we did, I think, was like the twenty second or twenty third of December, and mm-hmm. we haven't gotten the Christmas update from either the, of us. The full Christmas update, yeah. So I will just say briefly some things that I got for Christmas. Oh, nice. Okay. If I remember them, still. any technology? Uh, well, I did get an Apple Watch. It wasn't exactly a Christmas gift. James and I both now have the Apple Watch Series 6, so if you see us on the street and you want to jump us, honestly, I don't know what good it would do because I have a passcode. But And really... you, you'd also have to jump us individually in different states. Right. So it'd be, you know. It would be a challenge, but totally worth it for a $400 Apple Watch. Um, <laughs> so we both got Apple Watches. Uh, another interesting thing is it, we haven't gotten much snow. Maybe I complain about the snow sometimes, but... I like asked for like ski type stuff because eventually I'm going to want to ski. Yeah. Um, So I got like a nice jacket and one of those like external jackets that is waterproof and then uh, like ski pants. And so I I'm a little bit more prepared for if I ever get to ski, which honestly, I'm I'm not really planning on skiing this year, but um, just wanted to kind of start building the, the inventory, so to speak. Right on. Um, that's probably the main. That's why I'm like looking around my room here. What else? <laughs> I'm wearing. I'm wearing a gift here. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, National champs, 1984, BYU. That's right. Us BYU fans were still talking about something that happened 36, 37 years ago when we won the national championship. That was awesome. But um, <laughs> you know, it was like six years before I was born. It's all good. It's yeah. all good. It's, it's been a while, but you know, mm. these days, most colleges can't win the national championship anyway. It only goes to like four or five schools anyway. So, um, anyway, it's something to be proud of for our past. And who knows? Who knows what the future holds? Who knows? That James, is, yeah. what's the what's the update from you for for Christmas? You guys usually do like a lot of games and things. Did you guys do that this year? Um, our Christmas party wasn't that well attended. We'll just say that. So the two, the two instructors that did show up, we sent them away with brand new shiny games, $50 games. So that was a bunch of fun. Um, yeah, a lot of people were busy, believe it or not, very busy over the holidays. Um, December is always kind of like that. Super hectic. We got to have Christmas, um, with Lara's family. So when we'd recorded, I think we had Christmas with my family already, but then not, uh, not hers and it was nice and i got gifted an apple watch which was just absolutely had had not predicted it i wasn't thinking about it i didn't have it on any wish list or anything like that and opened it and it was really exciting and so jeff i'm super super pleased to announce like jeff's super into crossfit if you guys know and uncharacteristically doesn't talk about it as much as other people talk about it (laughs) that's That's because i'm very out of shape um but you you do appreciate it, and we'll talk about it occasionally. I do it, do it often. And he's definitely way better about exercising than I am. But but I've been running for a week now. I was actually I actually started running three days before I got the watch, and then with the watch, it's so cool because you can um, record your heart rate, and you can do EKGs, and you can um, get your blood oxygen. Um, so. A lot of developments from when the Apple Watch was first released and things that are actually like decent for health. And I think yeah. as far as a piece of tech, I think it's actually good at trying to help you like be healthier, be a little bit more mindful. They got that Breathe app and some other stuff. And so um, 
I had an Apple Watch before. I was without one for a while. And then to get it back, I was like, all right, let's take full use of the functionality. So yeah. really excited to get back into running, which, you know, kind of gets into and we got some we got some other fun presents and things and cute little books for jacob and he's starting to walk now so that's really exciting um like just starting but that kind of comes to a little bit the podcast if you're done with updates i'm done you're done okay i I mean i will i'll just add that we did drive from california back to tech back to utah so first we were in we were in texas flew back to utah i think then i recorded that episode then we went to California, we drove to California and then we drove back and that drive back was like the longest drive of my life. So that's pretty much my only update. I'm just happy to be home. We're working on the house again. We're, you know, back just enjoying home. being home and like relaxing for a few days before everything gets back to, I don't know, post holiday life. But, um, yeah, let's talk about 20. Well, do you want, do you want to introduce the topic, James? Yeah. Well, I did want to say that like, I am definitely one of those like new year, new goals kind of people. And yeah. I know, I feel like, I don't know, you got to tell me, Jeff, but I feel like every year that goes on, it's become less in vogue to talk about like your goals. It's like, it feels like more bragging and stuff. I don't know if it's a cultural shift. Maybe mm-hmm. I'm like totally reading it wrong, but I think a lot of people are like tongue in cheek saying like, my only resolution is not to have resolutions. Like, I literally heard that from a neighbor. Uh, and I just feel like, I don't know. Is it because people I'm, are embarrassed about their goals? Or is it just that people I mean, are, I've like, got, more cynical? Or, like, I don't I've know. I've got, like, a solid five years on you. So I guess let's have this conversation again when you're 35. But, <laughs> um, you know, I used to be really big into resolutions. And this year was probably one of the first years that I haven't done any. Like, sat down and really said, like, I'm going to do this. Mm-hmm. And that's because resolutions for me always tend to fall flat and um, I do them for a little while and it falls flat. And I guess I just kind of feel like I need to just like, I know the things that I need to do and I want to work toward those Um, whether or not that's a written down goal or not. I don't know. I don't know if it makes a huge difference for me, but I'm not denying that it definitely makes a difference for some people. Yeah. So, well, and, and I would say that for I, business, yeah. I think for business, it's important to have goals as well. Yeah. Well, and I, I think to add to that, I would also say I'm a goal person all year long. So like, right. it's not like I only try goals out once a year. It's I, I have weekly goals with my wife and we sit down and we plan like we're that we're like those kind of people where we like, what do we want to do in our family life? And then we decide like, hey, we want to go on a date on Wednesday or whatever. And, you know, we'll go on dates uh, occasionally on Wednesdays and we'll like plan it out. And so there's like this expectation and um, it's easier to live up to because it's like clear and it's out in the open. And Laura's an excellent partner in that respect and companion. Um, so shout out to my wife, Lara. But I think, you know, with the business and with personal goals, like, I can't tell you during the year how many times I have goals and I, I absolutely fall flat on them. But like, I feel like that's also part of the process. Like that's not like ultimately a failure. I think that failing a goal lets you know your limits and then like adjust and yet keep improving and keep pushing yourself. So anyway, that's, that's a little bit more behind my philosophy and mindset. I guess my question is like, how many times are you going to tell yourself, I'm going to read 12 books this year yeah, and you don't do it and you get uh-huh. to the end of the year and you're like, oh, I read like one, you know? So mm-hmm. I don't know. To me, it's, it's That's better. Funny. It's better at this point for me to stop being like, I'm going to read 12 books and then I get to the end of the year and I'm like, I don't know how many, like, I don't even know if I read 12 or if I read, you know, one or what. Um, and so to me, it's better to just like I totally get it. Yeah, be like, I want to read a book right now, so I'm gonna okay. sit down and read a book, and like I feel good about the fact that I read a book, and I want to keep pushing myself and keep making myself better, but like putting that arbitrary goal on it, and then not achieving it over and over, I to me that 
isn't helpful. But I will say I did just finish Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. Okay. Excellent book. All right. Let's 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 talk let's about jump into it. This is fun. Let's talk about podcast topics. Yeah. Everyone, so everyone that listens to this is gonna get some real deep dives into Jeff and James's life. But um we want to talk about today a recap of 2020 for the for coder kids, what we've done, how we feel the year went. You know, we're not going to discuss financial stuff <laughs> necessarily, <laughs> but uh, it was an interesting year to say the least. And then 2021, what does that look like moving forward um, and what plans do we have? So James, take it away. Yeah. So, I mean, if this is your first podcast, you know, welcome to the podcast. We're coder kids. You know, we do. <laughs> and episode one was all about us, right? We do summer camps. We do after school programs. Uh, we did our first, we just finished our first winter camp, you know, Christmas camp uh, week. And that was actually really successful. Um, certainly compared to the fact that we've never done that before. And we had a ton of kids in our Minecraft and they really enjoyed it. So, um, and then we also do private tutoring. And like we've teased a couple of times, we're going to be posting on-demand classes very soon. And we'll kind of talk about that. Um, so that's who we are as coder kids. Some of the things that we do kind of for fun because we love you guys, because we want to provide things that are useful to the universe is our kid friendly game reviews on YouTube, our podcasts, which are on YouTube or just your regular podcast apps, overcast, you know, the Apple podcast, Google podcast, Spotify, um, all that. Um, and we also have you know, a Minecraft yeah. server. I would say that's something oh, we of offer course. for fun in our and, Discord channel. And our and our Coder Kids Arcade where, yeah, you can be in the Minecraft server. You can play Roblox with us, Fortnite with us. Um, I Definitely Minecraft seems to be the most active. I, I'd say we always pop in there. And let's see, like right now, I think there are four or five kids in there. Typically, there are two to ten kids in there almost all at all times. So, um, it's a good community. We built kind of a fun thing and I, I almost don't want to say we, but like the kids have really built something pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I'm not in there too much, but, but uh, the kids are having fun, which is important. Yeah. So our next episode was number two, all about scratch. And I don't know, Jeff, I feel like scratch never gets enough love, man. I feel like I'm always promoting scratch. Oh yeah. And yeah, I mean, that's the thing is. Scratch, well, and this kind of goes into the next uh, episode as well, but like there are so many benefits to a, a kid jumping in and doing some coding. And Scratch is a coding platform, but it's also just extremely, extremely creative. So if you have a feel of art, if you love coding, um, there are just some awesome benefits to diving into doing Scratch. And we talked about this in the episode, but a lot of kids... Will kind of be like, oh, I'm, I've done Scratch because they did like one summer camp with Scratch or something. And the reality is like, well, I don't know if it's like that those kids are never going to want to do coding professionally <laughs> because they feel like they've just done something and want to move on. Um, but we said this in the episode, it's good to like push your child and say like, you haven't really done Scratch. There's so much to do. There's so much to learn. And I was just going to, I think we should just jump around a little bit. We were going to kind of give a recap of some of the episodes we've done. Sure. Um, but I just kind of want to jump down to like Rock Coder and talk about oh, him yeah. for a second. Because he he does, I mean, he professionally, he's a programmer, but um, he makes a lot of like games in Scratch just for fun. And to get to that level where Rock Coder is, like that's not even in the, realm of possibility for these kids who are like oh i've done scratch right so there's no yeah. such thing as you've done scratch it's like um scratch is an awesome platform awesome community uh and an awesome resource that most people listening to this episode have not uh did not have the opportunity to do when they were kids yeah i mean actually it's not even grammatically correct if you, it's kind of like saying i've done spanish like what do you do, right, do in exactly. Spanish? It's like, oh, I I was like in a week long summer. Yeah, camp I took a about Spanish, Spanish summer camp. It's like, it's okay, like, cool. What? So you can introduce yourself. You can say a couple 
things. You, you got some vocab down, you know, maybe you, you learned something about the culture. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. Or I've done it. But man, like can you go piano. deeper? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so, you know, Jeff, you speak Spanish, but like, could you speak Spanish better? Like still? Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, and same for my Russian ability. Although I think you speak Spanish better than I speak Russian, but, um, yeah, so it's, I think it's better to say like, oh, like I have done this summer camp or like I've done this project in Scratch um, because Scratch is a language. And so it's just weird to say like, I've done a language. It's like, Great. oh, okay. Like I don't even know English perfectly <laughs> for context, right? So um, yeah, anyway, that's that's a dead horse at this point. But we love Scratch. We love you, MIT, um, who developed it originally and who brought that to the world. So definitely thank you um and it's free you know we love free coding resources so minecraft well, speaking of coding resources james i mean yeah. i know you just said that on a whim but we yeah. did do a few episodes talking about resources um That's three three of them come to mind <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Although yeah. We did, there are a few more we did an episode about like coding for like coding resources for like really young kids like mm -hmm. games and things they could play um an episode for like coding resources for like older kids and then yeah. also this episode that we where we talked about like um just like some interesting like plugins and like chrome extensions and things software that yeah that kids could use for like online classes that's because episode 13 yeah kind of in the middle of the pandemic i guess you could say um just trying to give some tips to like kids that you know, i would say those are pretty evergreen though i would say oh yeah ep episode 13 is great for my life um it's great for if you're an adult it's great if you're a student um a lot of those things especially if you're digesting a lot of like written words like if you're definitely listen to that episode if you're a working professional and you have to go through like long pdfs and you have to like read word for word the text-to-speech really really helps in my opinion um well uh, and and uh episode seven and 17, which are where our coding resources episodes, um, yeah. those are also pretty evergreen because the reality is that new coding resources, like not, I mean, people try to release them, but like really good ones don't really come out that often. And so even if you're listening to this theoretically in like 2023, I think going back to episode seven and 17, it's kind of like, you know, Honestly, those will still be probably for sale and they'll still be great resources. <laughs> so yeah. I would probably recommend, um, probably recommend giving those a listen. So, yeah, I mean, I kind of want to dive into Minecraft. We got a couple of episodes on that. So episode four is Minecraft good and bad. Uh, Minecraft nine or episode nine is Minecraft assets with ultimate immersion. Um, and is there another one about yeah, Minecraft? That's Not it. really. Um, so I would say Minecraft is <laughs> the conclusion we came to spoiler is Minecraft is good mostly. <laughs> and, uh, it's a great podcast. We kind of go in, it, it's a, it's a deep dive. We describe what Minecraft is. And, um, I think we might kind of revisit that. Um, there have been some updates to Minecraft, some new things, and my thinking on it has, has evolved a little bit as well, but you know, that's a great episode. One of the, deep dives who we did was with someone who makes a living literally creating assets for Minecraft, which are additional add-ons to the game um, through his mod. And his uh, his name's Ultimate Immersion. You can look him up on Patreon and YouTube is his, his big place there. And, you know, kind of an update from the story. He's released some new uh, things. So um, his his asset pack is really focused on creating modern architecture inside of Minecraft. And you usually have to have a pretty beefy computer to be able to, to run his stuff. Uh, at least if you're ray tracing it, which is what it's intended to be like. So it's almost a lot of it is photorealistic um, textures, like wood grain textures. You have, like modern kitchen appliances. You have like a stereo system and computers and you can make like office buildings and, and like city layouts and, um, and yeah, so you can go into episode amazing. number nine and listen to that whole Check thing. Check that out. 
<laughs> yeah, but, I, but the the update is just the like the home theater. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which I mean, his stuff is incredible. So definitely, definitely go and check that out and check out his YouTube channel. Um, I will say, along with the resources that we we already talked about, we also did episodes about um, laptops and desktops, and so we talked about those kind of in detail because, um, especially as you are thinking about Christmas, which just passed. Um, like getting your child like a gaming laptop or, or a gaming desktop or something like that is something that I think is is pretty pretty interesting. And I think with Coder Kids, we are, uh, you know, when we first when I first started the company, I I was like, well, we're only going to do coding. But it was pretty clear within like the first year or two that there were certain kids out there who were just so into gaming, especially with Minecraft, that um it, that the business kind of needed to go in that direction also so we do offer quite a few resources for 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 gaming quite a few classes for gaming as well that i think are really we we've, we've developed them to be really beneficial for for kids yeah absolutely and the other thing is you know we've recently both like i've built two computers and you built one computer since that desktop builds episode yep. so we might be able to provide we, a, a more in-depth update about that later that's true i guess we taught ourselves a little something too huh yeah yeah well it's nice to hear that probably it's nice to hear that we're taking our own advice <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah sure. you know it's like we're interested in it and and uh, we're kind of rebuilding so um yeah, we, we talked talk about there were some topics that we talked about. I would say just kind of looking, we have a, a list going of our different episodes, but um, I would say I could break it down into a, two main topics. Um, so I'll Education just throw in a, big, yeah. a quick. So we only did one episode really about like gaming, which is surprising. Yeah. Um, and so maybe that's something we can look forward to in 2021 is like kind of some more episodes about gaming, particularly directed toward like your children and, and how gaming impacts your children or or what the parenting philosophy should be around that or, or something like that. Um, and also James is doing these these kid friendly game reviews on YouTube. But um, so we talked to this guy, Squatting Dog, who is a professional like full time gamer and content creator. And um, I, I found that that conversation to be like very enlightening for me. Um, who's I'm not a big time gamer, um, but just to see, I guess, like the community that can be built through gaming um, and the you know the positive the positive impact. I think Squatting Dog is a really awesome personality. So yeah, and I think he's a really interesting person. Like, I, yeah. I feel like he is really, really authentic. He's a little bit, he's one of the older streamers, which, you know, he's, he's our age. Um, it's, he's not old, um, <laughs> but he's old in terms of like streamers and he's incredibly mature and just family friendly. So, um, yeah, definitely check him out. I do think there will be in 2021, a little bit more gaming focus, but you know, as a segue into our educational episodes, I would say that. We're also going to get more academic as well. So we have some uh, people who like to be on the podcast, um, some professors from the University of Houston who are either in the computer science fields or who are doing research um, relating to that field. And I do think, without making promises or name dropping, I do <laughs> think, um, you know, I think we want to get people in educational philosophy as well um been working with the university of houston for a while it's where we get about 80 percent of our instructors or more and so we've got a lot of gratitude and you know it's our alma mater as well or like one of them for jeff that's right yeah. jeff's got a lot of alma maters because he's so educated <laughs> um so we did we did talk about education it, it's interesting i don't know what set us off on this topic james but we did two episodes about tech, tech and education <laughs> And then we talked to oh, Andrew Maddox man. about like kind of talked a lot about like the coronavirus and impact of coronavirus on um, on the educational landscape. We did an episode, which is the last episode with Diane Shang about <laughs> yeah. um, about like her her community education program that she does in Fort Bend ISD. And then we talked about um, 
how kind of technology is used with uh, Acton Academy, Katie, to like kind of individualize the, the needs of the students that go to their school and in their like model and philosophy. So it it's is almost interesting. A, yeah. Kind of, yeah, we kind of took this this uh, tangent, I guess you could say, into like the educational space, um, which we are educators. And so I think there's definitely going to be some more talking about like how we can implement technology in education um, and kind of come at it from the, from the focus of, you know, also like coding and gaming and some of these things that are a little bit more uh, digital arts, things that are a little more like extracurricular, I guess you could say. Yeah, absolutely. I'd, I'd almost say that spiritually acting Academy episode is probably tech and education part three. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Yeah. Um, and the longer you listen to it, the happier, happier we are about tech and education. So it's kind of <laughs> <laughs> fun. So if you want, if you want to like see an evolution of us, like getting in a better mood, that's how you do it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <I> guess so. <laughs> so James, yeah, it, th- it, that's been our episodes. It's been, it's been kind of a wild year, but you know, we've, <laughs> so, so James, we have 23, we yeah. have 23 episodes. Like, yeah. Do you have do you have one or two that really stand out to you as like the the best of? If if maybe someone's listening to episode twenty four now and and they're wondering, all right, let me go back and listen to something. What would you recommend that someone give a listen to? Honestly, I don't know. Do you want to be inspired? I would say if you want to be inspired, listen to episode eight. Listen to episode sixteen. Okay, just listen to any multiple of eight, I guess. No, so eight or 16. So episode eight is our awesome instructors. I'm just inspired by some of the instructors that we've gotten to work with. And we interviewed Martin and uh, Emily on the podcast that time. And, uh, you know, I, I just really enjoyed listening to their stories. I learned stuff on the podcast that I didn't know. Um, you know, I'd, I'd been their boss and stuff, but I didn't know um, kind of all the stuff that they're into. And it's... It's really cool. Um, Squatting Dog, you know, he dealt with a lot of his friends, you know, committing suicide, some dark stuff. And, you know, he found a way to make a positive out it about it and, like, be really serious and very conscious about creating a positive community. And that, to me, is pretty inspiring. Um, I think one where I just nerded out hardcore was probably the ultimate immersion podcast where it was just like so yeah. cool to talk to someone who uses technology to create stuff that just brings people joy. And um, well, yeah. let, let so me that's dive three. in. With, that's three. Yeah. I, I didn't want you to take them all. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, I mean, I, I know it's like kind of a cop out, but like one of my favorites was, was the first one all about coder kids because we were in person. So it was kind of fun at James's house. Um, And I thought it was kind of fun to talk about like the history of coder kids. So if you are just getting to know us for the first time, that's a good one to go back and listen to. Second favorite for me was um, probably rock coder. Um, I just, I've, I've always like seen him posting for years on our scratch educators group on Facebook and, um, have seen the projects that he's created and honestly like you know you just you just see these people online and you never really i mean unless they're like a twitch streamer streamer like squatting dog you never even know what they look like right and so yeah um i just thought it was really fun to like meet cliff and he's such an awesome person and i mean awesome person way beyond just his scratch projects and so um really enjoyed that so yeah um, put a face with the name yeah I yeah d- I- yeah I did want to mention Dora Palfi from Imagine Labs. I I had a bunch of fun. Jeff wasn't on the podcast, but um, it's cool to see people like even across country lines like coming together to to talk about tech and to make waves. You know, she's hyper focused on getting girls into coding, and um, so you'll see more stuff from us uh, in the summer about that. But um, yeah, it's that's another inspirational one. I don't know. Um, sure. I think, I think the message that I'm coming away with is like, I enjoy this. Like, uh, oh, yeah. I enjoy this podcast. Great, it's great yeah. episodes. And you know, so I hope that 
if you're listening to this, that you're enjoying it as well. Obviously, I'm not trying to only do this for my enjoyment, but I I do think it's given us an opportunity to talk to some super cool people. I think the exciting thing about it is that um, we kind of talked about this in probably one of our episodes, but you know, 2020 was a really weird year in which, um, you know, I'm not going to say like all of our business dried up because we're we're still doing okay. Um, you know, summer was better than fall and uh, spring for sure. Um, spring, we had to like cancel a bunch of classes and do them online. And that wasn't very fun. Um, but anyway, we're, we're staying alive and like many small businesses, you know, it's been a struggle in a lot of ways, but in other ways, I think 2020 is great because, you know, we started this podcast, for example, you know, it's just like, there are certain things where we set, we were able to step back and look at, look at our business, look at the year, look at our future and just kind of think like, okay, what do we really want? out of this business? What do we want for the kids? What do we want for the parents? And, and how do we want to be like understood with what we're doing? And I don't know, for me, it's been refreshing to like do this podcast and do the other things we're doing because um, it's just been, it's, I guess it's been a little bit more fun. It's been refreshing. You know, you're not getting constantly burned out with just like make money, make money, make money, but it's like a chance to kind of step back and think about, some bigger picture things that maybe will make a bigger impact. Yeah. And talking about impacts and talking about goals for the future. I mean, we genuinely care about, you know, reaching out and, um, yeah, just helping people get exposed to coding who wouldn't have been exposed to coding, um, before. I mean, I think we talked about in our mission on episode 10 where, we talked a little bit about scholarships and, and what we really believe. And we were able to call to the scholarship list and get a lot of kids on scholarship into our winter camps. And it was really great. They had not taken any kind of coding or like scratch before, except maybe like an hour at their schools. I think they had a good experience. So, um, you know, that's what we really want. You know, if, Yeah, like we care about really moving the needle with people that wouldn't otherwise get the opportunity to code. And people that do have the means, we want to give them an excellent experience. So, you know, we're about serving everybody that we can and creating. And also, you know, with the Coder Kids Arcade and with our emails and the podcast, like we really want to create a community of parents and kids that can have fun together, can ask questions, can get answers to their questions, um, can figure out what games are kid friendly for their house, you know, and provide that value. So if there is something as a parent, um, as a subscriber that you see that you'd like to know about, if you, there's some kind of technology that you're confused about or just would like explained in a logical way, then we'd love to hear about it. But um, other than that, we've got some exciting goals and things for the spring semester and then the summertime as well. And, you know, the rest of 2021. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I think the first thing that the first thing to talk about uh, that that comes to my mind, at least, is um, that James and I have been working for the last little while on these on demand classes and. um, I don't know if you're familiar with this. If you've put out a class of your own, this is a lot of work. Um, so James and I have yeah. kind of set some goals for 2021 to to release some on-demand content, which I think is nice because um, we have live classes, which I think will always be like the crux of our business. But um, if the timing doesn't work, or if you're traveling, or you know whatever it might be, um, an on-demand class is just kind of a quick way to get your child some exposure to to a topic or a project um, without uh, having to maybe do the full investment of of a a longer class yeah that's exciting that's yeah something we're going to be releasing hopefully our first two projects pretty soon yeah yeah and we're going to be releasing one um absolutely for free and that's just kind of an introduction to scratch like hey this is a scratch this is where the toolbars are this is how to use stuff kind of you know just introduce the tool 
and then we'll have ones that uh, you can pay for. And the nice thing is it's, it's, you know, at least right now, and I don't think this is going to change. Um, you know, it's not going to be a subscription model. So once you have a class, like you, you own it. Um, there are a lot of other like subscription models out there. I don't really like those cause you know, then you forget to cancel and whatever. And, and, um, we really like to be accountable to you. And, um, anyway, so some super cool projects, if there are any project requests, we can do those as well. So this will probably be coming out about once, um, per month you'll see new on-demand classes that are that are posted so you can check back about that additionally though jeff i'm so sorry like i forgot about the blog so we actually have quite the blog these days um yeah we've got a couple of people writing you know so jeff you're writing for the blog sarah is writing for the blog we've had some some guest writers as well i've written for the blog like probably twice maybe not that much uh (laughs) But, uh, yeah, so we're, we're doing a lot of things, um, in terms of content creation, uh, hopefully you'll find valuable and they're definitely pretty clearly topical and they're not, hopefully not clickbaity. Um, you know, whatever the title is, this is exactly what's inside. There's no kind of like mystery there. Um, as far as for, you know, YouTube and podcast goals, you know, we're going to continue uploading pretty regularly with the podcast. Um, we might take a break here for about two or three weeks while we kind of get things um, situated. We, we get some solid interviews on and, and reach out to some really high quality interviewees. Um, well, and I know we were talking about trying to increase the uh, production value of the, of the YouTube version of the podcast as well is that yeah 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 um so hopefully that way it'll get slowly better over time and more watchable <laughs> and more interactive right so but i mean the interesting thing about this is that you know we just wanted to start a podcast and i think uh like like yeah you probably heard people say you know you're just gonna have to jump in and do it so i'm happy for these 23 episodes even if the production quality isn't super great um and i think that our, the the core of our business is still like offering classes. So that still has to be like a pretty high priority. So in the, in the coming weeks where, I mean, all of our spring classes for 2021 are already up on the website and then summer classes, you know, hopefully within the next three weeks as we're, as we're kind of talking about improving the production quality of our podcast. Also, we can get the majority of those summer camp classes up on our website um, so that, you know, we're, we're focusing on the most important things, which is the classes and camps that we're offering for your child. Um, and then, you know, also we can come back with fresh eyes and and fresh voices, so to speak to our podcast, fresh graphics. (laughs) So anyway, uh, yeah. And speaking to that, yeah. Speaking to that directly, you know, as far as podcasts or sorry, as far, far as summer camps and spring classes go, we have two new topics that I would like to highlight. One is, you know, Minecraft Advanced, and that is for kids who are kind of pros at Minecraft already, right? Like they've been playing Minecraft for a year or two or three, and they're a little bit bored with it, and they want to learn how to be a, like an administrator or also called an operator or OP, and they want to run their own server they want to figure out like complicated redstone builds how to use command blocks just the complicated stuff inside of minecraft how to install mods just like all of that stuff how to do commands um so there's going to be that class we already have i think it's the most signed up for class in the springtime already not even kidding, Jeff. <laughs> so that's cool. Yeah, so that's great. We are excited. That one does have limited space because the you know finding instructor for that is a little bit more difficult. So, right. um, and then I will the other, also. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, James. Which the what's other, the other one? The other one is Android app development, and very excited about that. Um, and you can do this on a Windows or a Mac computer. Um. Oddly enough, I don't think you could do it on a Chromebook, which is funny because it's like you could run the app on a Chromebook. But anyway, 
Um, so that one does require uh, Windows or Mac PC. And that one's going to be pretty cool. You're going to be creating things like calculators and, and list apps and very basic things, but like actually working applications um, that will work on an Android tablet or phone and um, they'll be able to like actually see results. And that's, that's using um, a new kind of language and standard um, developed by uh, Google and that's a little bit shorter and easier to do. And so we've got Miss Kyra's heading that effort up, and then we have some other instructors planned. Um, if the, or I should say, when the class you know gets above eight students, but anyway, those ones are are two classes in particular I'm very excited about. And then of course, you know, Jeff, we've got five different Scratch classes. We've got um, we've got Python, we've got Java, we've got Roblox Studio, and I just love. I just love the idea of Fortnite creative and Fortnite leadership in action. Um, yeah. Those, so those two, Fortnite creative and Fortnite leadership in action, um, the leadership in action class really teaches leadership and more than anything teaches communication because to be a leader, you have to communicate with people. Fortnite is like I just feel like perfect for this because it is it's high stress game. Just be like completely honest. It's high stress. Yep. There's a ton to communicate. There's items everywhere. There's literally compass directions that you can call out. There's um, strategies. There objectives, um, and and it's intense and it's time bound. And so to be able to be you know, the kids actually get to be a leader in that kind of environment, and that's pretty exciting. And then for Fortnite, the workshop, I think it's called, the creative workshop, you can, it's it's really a game design class. It's not a coding class. But it's a game design class where you'll develop death runs and obstacle courses and mazes and and scavenger hunts and tower defense games and any kind of game that they can come up with, they can actually create in, mm -hmm. in a 3d environment. Um, it's, it's really cool. Really cool. And I'm, I'm super excited for it because it really does require like creative thinking. And um, so it's again, not a coding class, but it really develops that sequential logic. It, it really develops that like, um, just the whole aspect of, of game design. What's the objective? Is it fun? Is it hard? Like, how hard is it? Do you have different difficulty levels? Do you have different levels? What what do you want the environment to be like? Like, all of these questions the students have to answer, and it requires that critical thinking. And so I do think that's useful, and obviously it's killer fun. So, um, Man, yeah, it's been and, some great, some great classes, James. I know you're about to go off on something else, but just we gotta, one thing. we gotta let you take a break from from just talking one for thing. a minute. All and right, that's just the format is just a change we've made. Is classes are now an hour and a half instead of an hour, and I think that's been widely received as better across yeah. the board. Uh, so if you're a parent and you're looking at our website and you're seeing like, wait a sec, they're, you know, the course is eight weeks long instead of 12 weeks. Um, believe it or not, even though it's the same number of instructional hours, kids get about double done. And the reason for that is there's less time kind of booting up Discord and getting connected and and um, less kind of like shutdown time and almost double the amount of like actual work time. And so we found kids just complete way more and they enjoy it more. Um, and if you do like, you know, two hours after like a long school day, then you can start to see productivity start falling again. But like an hour and a half is kind of that sweet spot uh, where they can get more done than they have previously. So that's why we switched to that. Um, cool. And uh, again, positive developments here. Yeah. Well, I will say that this summer I am planning to, and this is a this is an announcement to you, possibly James, but mm. um, I've been working with a school in Fort Worth 
and I am slated to be the instructor for a class called um, No kidding. Something something along the lines of like um, building a business online. Like um, if you're a kid, well, let's say like ages 10 to 18 and you have a business idea that you want to build a website for. I mean, I'm going to go through like the basics of building the website, but also um, like best practices for SEO and like finding keywords that might hit your niche and things like that. So um, it's going to be, again, not coding based, but more just like using a, a website builder like Squarespace to like get your first business off the ground and to get that website going. And uh, again, best practices for SEO. So, well, that is super cool. Yeah. So, long story short, people, a lot we've of stuff had, going on. We've had, we've had a really great year, and and it's been tough. Like, definitely a lot of change, but I think we've been grateful, and I think most of all, we're grateful to you. If you're watching this podcast, if you're listening to this podcast. If you're signing up for our camps, that's our lifeblood. You know, that allows us to keep working and operating and building and creating new stuff for you. Um, And yeah, and just any kind of feedback that you give, we're super, super grateful. And yeah, literally none of this is possible without you. So that is, I think, a message from 2020 you know, from us and, uh, we are so excited and we're just full throttle ahead for 2021. Like we're so steam ahead. We're going, we're going full Titanic. No (laughs) (laughs) Titanic. What kind of, you can pick any, any other ship. Well, I'm just, I don't know if, I don't know if other ships go full steam. Full. Oh, cause I guess it was steam. They were like full steam oh ahead, gosh. and then they hit the iceberg. So it's hmm. not going to be like that. Okay, we're in an airplane then. They're it's going to be much better. It's going to be like the Roaring Twenties. <laughs> the Roaring Twenties also ended disaster. <laughs> Jeff, stop talking. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be great, people. Um, I'm just messing with James. Oh, it's easy to mess with me because I give you great reactions. So awesome. Well, all right, everyone. Thanks for I think listening that's it. to this end of 2020 update. Looking forward to a wonderful 2021. We'll see you in two to three weeks. Okay. Until next time. Until next time. Hasta la vista.